Okay, so we also have what we call your equilibrium of structures. I think you are all familiar with this one because you are doing this one since you were in static. So, ginagamit nyo to. What is this? So, we have the summation forces vertical, summation forces horizontal, and the summation moment at a point. Now, these three are equal to zero. So, ito yung equilibrium natin. So, pag yung structure natin na achieve niya yung summation forces vertical is equal to zero. So, therefore, our structure is in equilibrium. So, what else? So, pag kunyari, it's three-dimensional siya. You can use summation forces x, summation forces y, summation forces z. So, meron din tayong Summation moment at x-axis, summation moment at y-axis, and summation moment at z-axis. And all of this should be equal to zero to say that our structure is or are in equilibrium. Okay, so we also have dif different types of loads and forces. Okay, so we have external loads, supplied loads, reaction forces, and internal forces. Now, what is the difference between these three? So if we say external loads, this one are the action of other bodies on structure under consideration. So, what do I mean? So, ang external loads lang natin, it just, by the word itself, external. Ito yung mga loads natin that are applied in a structure externally. Okay? Now, pag applied force, applied loads naman, this one is your live load, your dead load, gravity loads. So, ito yung usually na ginagamit natin for analysis. Also, external loads din naman. So, ang applied load natin is an external load. Then we also have the reaction forces. So what is the reaction forces? Ito yung mostly na ginagamit natin sa rollers. That one is the reaction force. We also have yung hinge. We we'll have your reaction force there. Now say pag say you have a roller, di ba? You have only one reaction there. So this one is a reaction force. Then this one you have hinge, dalawa yung magiging reaction natin dito. So this one, this one is what you call reaction forces or just reaction. Then lastly is the internal forces. So what is the internal forces? Most of the time we say it as shear, we also say it as bending moment or Actual. So, ito yung mga internal stresses natin in a beams or in a structure. Now, say for example here, hatiin natin yung beam natin. So, pag hinati natin yung beam, we have here, ayan, nahati na siya, we have your shear here, you have your moment sa beams, then you have your actual. So, actual have your moment. Ayan. So, ito yung tinatawag natin na internal forces. So, again, pag sinabi mong internal forces, externally it is or it should be zero. But internally, you have a value. Now, say for example here. So, mayroon tayong shear dito pag kinat nga natin siya. But again, dapat externally magiging zero. So, paano natin gagawin yon? So, pag ililipat mo dito, you should have a downward force. Kaya nga, shear natin here, ayan, upward. Kung upward dyan, pag natin dito, it should be going downwards. Kaya nga, pag pinagdikit na natin siya, magiging zero na siya. Kasi this one plus this one, magiging zero. Okay? So, yan yung internal forces natin. So, again, ang internal forces, externally, it should be zero, but internally, you have a value. Now, same goes here. So, pag action natin going to the right, therefore, here going to the left. So, this one naman is clockwise, therefore, here would be counterclockwise. You see, again, if you combine them together, they should be equal to zero. So, that is your internal forces. So, yun po yung difference itong apat na to. So, we also have here different types of reactions. So, ano ba yung most common na ginagamit natin? You have your rollers. You have 
your smooth pin or yung hinge and we have your fixed support so meron pa tayong uh, different types of reaction so we have your light cable or your weightless link so pag ganyan you have only one reaction which is going that way kung nasan po yung lightweight or yung weightless link natin so dun yung ilalagay yung force or yung reaction we also have here smooth contacting surface so you have here one force here so this one is yung mga free body diagram natin then you have your smooth pin connected collar which looks like this so you only have one here and then you have your smooth pin or hinge there then you have your slider which looks like this you have two you have a uh, horizontal then you have your moment then you have your fixed support so this one is the types of reactions that we have a uh, review so balikan natin yung strength of materials nyo ng shear and moment diagram i hope you can still remember so first thing so, paano natin kukunin yung shear and moment diagram? The first thing we have to do is to solve for the reactions. So, we have here a cantilever beam. Definitely, we have a vertical force. So, dv. Then, we have a horizontal force, dh. Then, we have your moment. So, this one is md. Now, just by looking at it, by just observation, we can say that our dh is automatically equal to zero. Why? Because again, we don't have any horizontal forces. Now, compared, say, sabihin ko ganito yung 2 kN. Sabihin natin 30 degrees. Is your dh equal to zero? No, kasi magkakaroon tayo ng components here na horizontal force. But then, in this example, we don't have any horizontal force, so automatic, our dh is equal to zero. Summation forces vertical, summation forces horizontal, or summation moment. So, in this case, we don't need the summation forces horizontal because we already have our dh na reaction, which is equal to zero. First, we can use summation forces vertical to get the dv or the vertical reaction at d. So, by using summation forces, vertical is equal to zero, upward positive. So, we have dv that is going upward, so that is positive dv. Then, you have here your 1 kN going downward, so negative 1. Then, you have here your 2 kN per meter na uniformly distributed so let's convert it to a concentrated load so if we will convert it so this would be just two times the length so your length is one meter one meter so that would be two so therefore this would be just four kilonewton so we have minus four then we have it on three minus three then you have minus two there minus two then minus two so this is equal to zero so therefore our dv would be equal to what transpose na lang natin lahat no para maging positive so that would be one plus four plus three plus two plus two so that is so our dv is equal to 12 kilonewton Okay, then our summation moment naman to get the MD. So summation moment at D is equal to zero. Clockwise, positive. So assumption natin dito, it is going clockwise. So therefore, that is positive MD. Then you have here your one kilonewton. So that is also clockwise. So plus one times our moment arm. So our moment arm here is also one meter. Then our four kilonewton here, this one is also going clockwise. So that is plus four times our moment arm. So our moment arm natin dito, one, two, three. Then we also have the three kilonewton. Again, this one is also in clockwise direction. So plus three times a uh, moment arm which is also three then you have your two here so plus two again it is clockwise our moment arm it is one two three four meters so four meters then we have here your two last 
2, then our moment arm here would be 5 meters. So this is equal to 0. So therefore, what is our MD? So our MD, so we have, say, alpha x uh, plus 1 times 1, then plus 4 times 3 plus 3 times 3, then plus 2 times 4, then plus 2 times 5. So alpha equal to 0. Okay, so our MD here is negative 40 kilonewton meter. So our negative here states that we have a wrong assumption of direction. So, ang MD natin hindi siya clockwise. So, therefore, it should be counterclockwise. So, we already have our reaction. Now, afterwards, our re reactions, we can already draw our shear and moment diagram. So, for our shear and moment diagram, so we have here... 12 kilonewton. Then we have na counterclockwise na 40 kilonewton meter. Then we have here, this one is equal to 0. So for our shear diagram, we will start at 0. Then we have here 12 kilonewton. Then it is going upwards. So let's say here, ito 12. So, positive siya kasi again, it's going downward, upward, sorry. Positive 12. Then, we don't have loads here. So, diretso lang din to. So, we don't have loads. Then, we have 1 kilonewton. So, it will go down. So, positive 12 minus 1, you will get positive 11. Then, again, we don't have any loads here. Then, we have a uniformly distributed. So, ang moment diagram kasi you are increasing the degrees of curve. Now, we assume pag horizontal siya, it is a zero degree. Now, after zero degree, you have first degree. Pag sinabi mong first degree, it is a slanting line already. Then, after first degree, you have second degree. Pag second degree, you have a parabolic curve. Now, pag third degree naman, you have a third degree so here we have a zero degree so pagdating dito first degree so it is a slanting line so you just have to convert this into a concentrated load so two times one that would be two kilonewton so if 11 minus two you will get positive nine so zero degree first degree dito so it is going slanting line then you have 3 degree at uh, 3 kilonewton here. So positive 9 minus 3, you will get 6. So positive 6. Then again, you have a uniformly distributed. You convert it into a uh, concentrated load. So 2 kilonewton per meter times 1, you will get 2 kilonewton. So this would be positive 6 minus 2, you will get positive. Four. So, positive 4, again, 0 degree to kasi uniformly distributed. Pagdating dito, you have a slanting line. Then, minus 2, positive 4, minus 2, you will get positive 2. Then, again, you don't have any load, so straight line lang siya. Then, it will go down. So, positive 2, minus 2, you will get 0. So, nag-close yung shear diagram natin. Now, how about naman for the moment diagram? So, for the moment diagram, we have here uh, 40 kilonewton meter, but it is in counterclockwise direction, so therefore it would be negative. So, again, we will start at 0, then it will go down to 40. So, it is negative 40. So, what will be the next values here? You have to get the areas of this shear diagram so for this one 12 times 1 you will get positive 12 then 11 times 1 positive 12 then the area of this one so yung area nito this one is positive 11 you will get uh, one half one half of 11 
plus 9 times 1. Kasi yun yung length natin. Times 1. Oh, sorry. 1. There you go. So, this would be positive 10. Then, how about here? So, this is uh, 6 and... Ano naman? 6 and... 4. 6 and 4. And then, our length is also 1. So, what would be our area here? Positive 5. So, this is positive... Five. Then this one, 2 times 1, that would be just positive 2. So, oh sorry, this is 11. Okay, so we have negative 40 plus 12. You will get negative 28. So this one is 0 degree. Pagdating dito, slanting line lang siya. So there. 28. Then here also, so negative 28 uh, plus 11, you will get negative 17. Again, diretso lang din siya. Then you have here 10. Negative 17 plus 10, you will get negative 7. Natin dito, negative 7. So it is a slanting line. It depends on you kung paano nyo kukunin yung curve or yung uh, itsura ng curve nyo. But personally, I use the, if you have here your triangle, kung nasa yung zero part of the triangle, nandun yung horizontal part ng parabola. So, this one is the horizontal. Now, say pag ganito naman, yung triangle nyo, nandito yung zero, so nandito yung horizontal na Parabola. So, same goes here. So, nandito yung pag ayan, ito. Ito yung triangle natin. This is the zero part. The horizontal part of the parabola would be here. And so, that would be that one. Then, same goes here. Negative 7 plus 5, you will get a negative 2. This one is the zero part of the parabola. So, nandito din yung the, uh, horizontal part ng parabola. Then, lastly, you have here. Negative 2 plus 2, that would be equal to 0. Horizontal to, so this would be a slanting line. So this would be the moment diagram of this particular structure.